Is there any questions about the three principles? You know, you get told it and told it, and sometimes you get a little bit, and you want to be a little bit more. If there's any questions, please ask. Listen. Still, just the idea of what are what are these principles you're talking about? <laughs> okay, one more time, and I'll never talk about them. Again. <laughs> this is it, the big finale. You know, those principles have been on Earth since the first person on Earth ever arrived. <laughs> And every human being and li every living creature in the world, they live by those principles. If you think at all, you're going by the principles. And these principles are God-given gifts. And I have to say this, they lie before time, space, and matter. That means to say they lie before creation. When you're born, you're connected to these three principles. And those three principles enable you to see light. They enable you to see creation. They enable you to be thinking creatures. And there's different degrees. And those different degrees are what we call levels of consciousness. So everybody in this world lives in a different level of consciousness. There's infinite amount. And another way to say that is everybody lives and sees a different understanding. And this is why the great mystics would say, we live in separate realities. Because everybody here, suppose there's, just suppose there's 150 people here. We all live in our own reality. What's ever going on this weekend, we all see it separate. We're separate realities. And they're all created from the way you use those three principles. Now, I know a lot of you people have picked it up and you live beautiful lives. Then they wake up one morning and they're in a bad mood again. So what's happened is you've slipped and your level of consciousness has gone down and you don't see so well. Then somebody would phone me and say, Sid, I've lost it. I say, you lost what? I've lost my consciousness. <laughs> and I'll say, what are you talking about? I say, well, I'm in a real bad mood. And I'll say, well, that's okay. That's natural. Just hang on and see what happens. They wake up the next morning and they're back up again. Now, you know what schizophrenic is somebody normally that their mind changes fast and they, they have no control over it. One minute they're happy. The next minute they're sad, they're going like this. Well, I'll tell you, there isn't anybody here that isn't schizophrenic in slow motion. <laughs> it might take you a week, a month, but you keep doing it. You're just, your mood change. And your mood change is dependent how you're using those three principles. Because these three principles, they create your reality. As I say, this is why the great mystics talk about separate realities. We all live in our own world. We all paint the picture that we see by our own thought system. It, it's that simple. But those three principles, you can't really explain it. I'm just talking in metaphors here because those three principles, when they're in the purity, before you've used them, where they are before time, space, and matter, Purity of mind is pure love. Purity of consciousness is pure love. Purity of thought is pure love. Now we come along and with our own free will, we start to use those principles. But we contaminate our life because we use them differently. Sometimes we use them for greed, sometimes for jealousy, 
envy. It's all different, all different things that change the, this mood change. I mean, you have to see they're connected. And we can't live without them because without any one of them, you wouldn't even be here. You wouldn't see creation. They are the ones that create the world we live in. And you are the ones that paint the picture of the world you create. It's that simple. I, I know it sounds complicated, but if you really look at it, it's a world of thought. From the cradle to the grave, this entire experience that you're going through in life is a psychological experience. It's all psychological. This is why when I found this, I thought this has to go to psychology because it's the secret to all psychological experience here in life. And I thought, wow, how simple. I'm going to go up to the first psychologist I see and I'm going to tell him. And the first one I did tell, woo, it was just like this. They had no idea what I was talking about. <laughs> Take your emotions. Could you have emotions without the three principles? Could you have anger without the principles? Could you have desire, anxieties, fear, love, hate? No matter what it is in this world, it stems from the three principles. And if anybody else ever says there's more than three principles, whatever they say, I can guarantee they're offshoots from the principles. And if you take an offshoot from the principle, it is not the principle because the principles can never be dissected, they can never be separated because they have no form. How can you possibly dissect something that doesn't have a form? Now you go into a, a bookstore and you probably find a book an inch thick, two inches thick, and it's all about consciousness. Now, I've had people say to me, there are people who've been talking about consciousness for years, and it's true. You walk into a bookstore and you can find one two inches thick, and it's all about consciousness. But it isn't. It's what we do with our consciousness. You can go into the store and find something about mind, and it's an inch thick. But it's not about mind. It's what we do with our mind. You can go into the bookstore and get another one on thoughts. Again, it's not the principle of thought, it's what we do with our thought. So all those things are just byproducts of how we use the principles. But to find the honest to God answer, you have to see the power in those principles. It's that simple. As you start to pick up the three principles yourself, and you pick up your own wisdom, you're not picking up what Bill's saying, or I'm saying, or anybody else is saying, it's your own wisdom. And the more you get this, the more self-esteem, the more pride you have in yourself, the more honor you have of being a doctor. And this is an incredible feeling, because I know a lot of doctors are the kind of, they're not even proud of being one. I don't, it's just because they feel the way they feel, and it's innocently how they feel. But once they start to see the three principles and they see their patients wake up and get new lives, they have this great pride in their profession. I know if I was a doctor, I'd be as proud as punch. I really would. But, uh, and that makes a lot of difference to the life of the practitioner. It changes his life completely in every single way and his marriage, his work, the way he sees life, the way he relates to people. And, and this is the beauty, when you can relate to people. And once you see this, I really mean this, no matter if it's a tinker, tailor, soldier, sailor, a queen or a beggar, you treat everybody the same because everybody <coughs> is the same inside. You're no different from the Queen of England or anybody else. Inside, you're the same. You're the same spirit inside. You're the same three principles 
And so when I'm talking to you, I'm talking to myself. And this is where there's no insecurity. You talk to yourself, oh, there's nothing to worry about. <laughs> because as I said to somebody yesterday, I'm not talking to you, the person, the body. I'm talking to inside you. And this is what these doctors do. They don't talk to a patient that's sick. They talk to somebody just like themselves that they know that that patient has the same as what they've got inside and they're talking to that part of them. And that patient will pick it up because that patient already knows. Everybody in this world is enlightened. Everybody. No exception. The only thing is you don't know it. And that's the difference between knowing and think you know. You know how those mystics will say, I know what I'm talking about. And somebody will say, that's quite arrogant of you to say you know. Why don't you say you think you know? And you say, well, I can't because I know. <laughs> See, you can't even say you think you know. And this has happened to me a million times. And I'll say, but I can't because I didn't know. I say, well, can't you say you just think you know? And you play a trick on them, you say, okay, I only think I know. As soon as you say that, they'll say to you, well, my thoughts are as good as yours. And you say, no, they're not, because you only think you know and I know. And then they're back to where you started. <laughs> You're back to where you started. It's not arrogance, it's not. Those mystics, they talked about the difference between seeing and seeing, hearing and hearing. Now the first little hearing is from the intellect. The hearing is from within, deep within the channels of your soul, deep within this, this, this spiritual consciousness, this is where they hear from. So when they're talking to you, they'll say, Please listen, not with your head, but your heart. And that's a metaphor. And other people will come along and say, oh yeah, you've got, to li you've got to listen from your heart. Here's your heart here on the left hand side. This is where you, that's a, it's a metaphor. All truth spoken in this world is a metaphor. What's the question? The question, yeah. <laughs> If, if indeed understanding these principles brings, uh, brings us towards living in the present more of the time, uh, if that would happen one day where we were all living in the present, he's wondering, and I'm going to add a word to his question, what the hell we would be talking about? <laughs> <coughs> Any more questions? Now, if, if everybody was work, uh, living in the now, there'd be a lot more mental health because people would be living in the now and it, the past would be gone and they'd be living with, without those ghosts from the past. It's those ghosts from the past that haunt us, that cause mental, mental illness. That's really, that's the answer. It really is. Because this is why it's so important that the future therapists can bring back people into the now and stop taking them in the past. Because you never, never in a million years will you help anybody by going back into the past, back into their old problems and talking about problems because when you keep talking about problems, you're keeping it alive. And innocently, now please, innocently, this is what happens. So the new therapists who are working from the principles will ignore the past and bring the people back into the present and let them see without those ghosts that are haunting them. And this is where mental health lies. It lies in the now. This is why all those great mystics from the past They've always put so much importance on the now. Because only now exists. 
And if you can live in the now, you'd see with clarity, you'd see with everything that's really happening now. And your mind would be clear. You know how I said yesterday, the mind is a biological computer. Now if you put a lot of nonsense into your computer, then that's all that can come out. Before I had this experience, I was an extremely insecure person. I was frightened of life. This little boy that grew up in Scotland was tarnished. It doesn't matter what with or why, but he was tarnished. He was insecure, he was frightened. He grows up into a man, he's still insecure and frightened because I was working from an old program. Now, if I had gone into a, a therapist, they would have said, well, oh, that's a good program, it's an old one, it's a goodie. We'll keep it, we'll keep it alive. But when I woke up, I thought to myself, hey, this program's old because I think I'm insecure. I think I'm frightened of life. And all of a sudden I realized all it was was thought. So I take my old program and I dump it. And what's left is this new program and I know my new program, like my old, is created from my thoughts. But now I have clear thoughts because it's untarnished. Now I told Judy, uh, all about my memories in Scotland. So one day we said, let's go back to Scotland. Now I had been away for maybe 35 years. I went back to Scotland and of course my old computer, my old uh, memories, as soon as I stepped off the plane were of no value to me. I got a new program. And I walked off the plane, and I swear before God, I had no idea where I was. And everywhere I went, it was walk like walking in a, a, a dream. I felt I was walking in a dream. And Judy said to me, is that the castle? And I said, I think so. I didn't even know it. And when I, I went down to where I lived, and I, I, I recognized it barely. Nothing had changed, I just barely recognized it, but it didn't belong to me. It belonged to another world that I used to live in because this new computer, this new program, was showing me something different, a lot more beautiful. And when we left, I thought Edinburgh was the most beautiful city I'd ever seen. It was like walking in a, an antique store. Or, or it was just so beautiful, I could not believe it. And Judy said to me, Sid, where was your head? Is this the place you were telling me about? And I'm going, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. But it is, it's a new computer. It's a new program, I should say. When you change your thoughts, you automatically get a new program. You know, I've been asked that question a thousand times, and, the, and the, my answer's always been, I can't tell you that. And they'll say to me, well, I'll give you an example. If a client comes in to me with a certain problem, what would you say? And I can't even answer that, because what I say, what difference does it matter? If I say what I would say, and you take it, and you use it as a technique, it might work once, but then after you're finished, what are you going to say? You're on your own. So the idea is if you get it the slightest bit for yourself and you can start talking about how their thoughts are connected to the problem, then they will pick it up. That's all we have to do. All we have to do is talk about the three principles and some people will say to me, well, Sid, that's too simple. It isn't. It's the most profound thing that's in this earth. There's the three principles. 
And other people will say they're looking for spiritual answers. But I'll tell you something. There is nothing in this world more spiritual than the three principles. Because the three principles, and the reason I say principles are spiritual, is because they lie before time, space, and matter. They lie before creation. They have no form, and that's why I'm calling them spiritual. And without them, there would not be creation. There wouldn't. Without even one of them, there wouldn't be creation. Because the three of them are really the trinity to all psychological experience here on Earth. And either one missing is not the trinity. Some people will say, well, only one of them is important. Some say only two are important. Some say three are important. They're all important because they're all the same thing in a different disguise. And the reason I say three of them is because you have to talk about them. So you have to put words on them. And if you were just saying divine mind, or well, so let's say universal mind, we'll change the word, the same thing, that's not explaining anything. But if you bring consciousness into it, and you start to realize what consciousness is, then you bring thought into it and how that's related, then you have something to talk about. But I can assure you, there is no other, there is only the three. They are the trinity to all psychological experience, all. And I'll tell you something, being a true Scotsman, I will give a nickel <laughs> to anybody that can come out with anything else other than the three principles. Would anybody like to try? <laughs> For a Scotsman, that's going out on the limb. <laughs> I'm, I'm shaky right now. I know. <laughs> I'd say to you, start talking and look yourself for how we use our thoughts. And if you start talking to your client about their thoughts, and you know what happens? You get more hope because you see the magic in them. And once you see the magic in them, it gives you hope, it inspires you, then you look deeper, then you go deeper, then you start finding it for yourself automatically without thinking. You start talking to your li the clients about their consciousness and their thoughts. And here's where the magic happens. They just change. There's no technique. If anybody in this world says to you, I have a technique that works with the three principles, they are not talking the three principles. Technique is a, it's a never, never land. It's a placebo. And they might think that they've found something, but when they go home, they haven't. It's just a placebo and it dies away. But if they can see how their thoughts are related to their behavior and the way they think, again, the magic appears and they find the wellness of health. That's, that all my heart, I, I hope you try it. Just try it, just for the, it, do, it doesn't cost you anything. <laughs> just try it. Start talking about the thoughts and between you and the client, the both of you might have the greatest conversation you've ever had in your life. No matter how bad your client is, as long as the client can listen. Now, all the other doctors and therapists in here, they've all experienced this. And I'll bet you every one of them would tell you the first time it ever happened, they were flabbergasted. And I've had phone call after phone call for 30 years saying to me, Sid, you'll never believe what happened in my office. And I'll say, try me. <laughs> and they'll say, well, this client, after 20 years, I just said to him or her something about their thoughts, and they woke up. And they throw all their pills away, and they just start a new life. When things like that happen, you wonder why this doesn't get known. And somebody said to me yesterday, you know, this is the biggest secret ever known. 
how did that, how come I never knew about this? So I was talking to Bob this morning and we thought, well, the b way to do that is we should say, don't tell anybody. <laughs> you know how nobody can keep a secret? So anyway, folks, it's three o'clock, and I'd just like to say good night, and I hope you all have a good life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.